My guest today is Angie Byron. Angie, how are you? I'm great. How are you, David? I'm doing great. Thank you for being on my show. Thank you. What do you do? Uh, so I have a really interesting job. There's a open so source. Do I. Well, that's great. High five. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, there's an open source content management platform called Drupal. I've heard of it. It powers, you know, two percent of the internet basically. Um, I am sort of the product manager slash community manager slash core committer type of role with our project. So that's that's your day job. That's my day job. Yes, I work with Acquia. Um, which is a big hosting and services company uh, selling things around Drupal. Okay. And uh, and my role is I'm sponsored by Acquia to basically make the Drupal community awesome. Okay. So Acquia is a uh, is a commercial company, a for profit company, but they are sponsoring an open source project in this case. That's correct. Yeah. And there's many other companies like that in the Drupal community, but uh, but Acquia is the one I work for. Outstanding. So, yeah. All right. Well, let's, uh, I don't think I've done a show on Drupal, so let's uh, start sure. with what is Drupal? Yeah, so Drupal, um, I like to say Drupal is like three things. Um, it's a content management system, so you have fill out forms, you can make web pages, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And it's content also, management uh, is basically being able to uh, build a, a content site without writing a lot of code. Correct, yeah. I, 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 our team does the hard part of writing all the code so that the content authors don't have to mess with any right. of that. They just click buttons, build out their content, that kind of stuff. Right. Um, it's also really flexible. There are little modules you can install. So if you decide you want, you know, wiki functionality or a forum or a poll or ratings or something like that, that's just a bunch of check boxes you check off, um, and you can kind of configure it any which way. Hmm. Um, so that's kind of the first thing Drupal is. It's also a content management framework. So we put a lot of work into the underlying APIs to make it very extensible and flexible and able to integrate with pretty much anything. Well, give um, me an example of that. So uh, you can build Drupal as like a fully decoupled application. So we have like say Princess. Cruises uses Drupal to power all of the ship manifests and how the ships are, are going, and they use a Drupal backend for that. Oh. There's people uh, using, there was like a little USB key they used to distribute that had Drupal running on it that could, uh, in an in event of an emergency, you could, you know, get up and running with some, you know, basic, uh, you know, communications, that sort of thing with the yeah. outside world. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the third thing it is, is a just really amazing community. It's just this wonderful community of millions of people. Uh, we do these Drupal conferences. It's basically like a big family reunion. We all nice. get together. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a lot of fun, and there's a lot of encouragement of diversity of, you know, different types of people and you know all walks of life. You know, sure. you walk in and people are computer science background, but also like I was the most technical person at my church or whatever. It's like all walks of life. So. Uh, yeah, very cool. That's. Uh uh, the technical community, just in and of itself, is a pretty diverse community. It's Absolutely, kinda, it's kind of yeah. fun to connect with them, yeah. which is what I'm doing right now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so let's see. The the Drupal's been around a long time, right? How when did it start? Yeah, it started back in 2001. So wow. we're one mm -hmm. of the longest standing uh, open source projects. And one of the ways we've been able to do that is we've you know sort of been always on the cutting edge of new technologies and incorporating that either in the core software or in the huge ecosystem of contributed modules. So when you know a new Pinterest or a new Snapchat or something comes out, uh -huh. you know we have a community of thousands of developers that have probably got a plugin developed for it within you know a week or oh, two. Oh, okay. So you could integrate with Snapchat, for example. Example, exactly. Or, or tweet yeah. from uh, tweet from, from it. Yes, all those of, kinds uh, of Drupal things. application. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, what's is there something that distinguishes Drupal from say WordPress or Joomla or all the? I mean, there's a lot of yeah. There's a lot of things in that space. I would say um, that WordPress is definitely the. I want a site up and running in five minutes, and I just want it to work, and I don't want to mess with it, kind of thing, right? Okay. Like it's great for that. Um, where Drupal is more useful is in sort of we call it ambitious digital experiences. So if you don't want just a website, you want your website to be customized exactly the way you want it. You want full control over how the photo gallery works or you know what database backends you're talking to or these kinds of things. Drupal is really fantastic for that. Okay. Um, yeah, so you can get in there and muck with it. You know, I like to say like, uh, I like Drupal because I have uh, customers that don't always know what they want. You know, they think they want a website, but then later it turns out they want an e-commerce platform. And then also, by the way, it has to talk to my, you know, BlackBerry 2, you know, from back in the 90s or whatever. That kind I of see. Thing. Okay. So it's, uh, it's really great for that because you can set it up one way and then continue to evolve it over time. And it all looks and feels consistent. This is the classic computer science trade-off between how much work do I want to do and how much control do I want yeah, to have. Yeah, exactly. And uh, the, uh, it sounds like Drupal falls in the middle here where uh, you don't have to write all that infrastructure 
but you still have the flexibility. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's a really interesting space awesome. to be like a product manager in because you're, you're sort of caring for multiple audiences. You have the developers who obviously want it to be flexible and well documented and all, you know, have all the bells and whistles API was, but you also want to expose that functionality to end users. So they don't need to know how to write code in order to build like a view of different images that have this tag or whatever, and they can just click that together. Yeah, that, so it's, that can it's, be just a drag and drop or configuration. Yes, thing exactly. That. Yep. What? Uh, tell me a little about the technology underlying Drupal. Mm -hmm. So Drupal's built off uh, of uh, PHP, MySQL, well, any database, but traditionally MySQL. Okay. Um, uh, backend. Uh, it's GPL, uh, so it's open source, uh, and uh, it has, geez, I don't know, like. I think I looked last, it has like 30,000 different modules. Modules are like the plugins for different features and functionalities. Um, and uh, the underlying stack is, is essentially, it would usually run on top of, it can run on top of Windows. I know Microsoft Azure did a lot of work, you know, trying to make sure Drupal runs seamlessly on that platform. Okay. A lot of people use Linux, uh, like a LAMP stack, traditional LAMP stack type of thing. Um, so it's so flexible it, in that way. It requires way. some web server somewhere. Yes. But that's yeah. about it. Yeah, a web server and a database, and database. you can use um, you know, SQLite if you want a very low-level database that doesn't mm -hmm. do anything too fancy, all the way up to you know, MongoDB or Oracle or anything. So. Yeah, um, very cool. Uh, so tell me a little about the process, the, this open source process. You said thousands of 30,000 modules? What was, I forgot the number now. But yeah, it was, yeah. It was like a big number. It's a huge there, number, yeah. Are, they, are those, um, all of those kind of blessed by the Drupal um, overlords, or can, yeah. they, can I just write a module and say it's Drupal module? Pretty much, yeah. So it's we kind of have uh, two tiers, I would say. Okay. So we have sort of a, a free market, if you will, like where anybody can just sign up, uh, you know, and they – agree to the terms of service to like, you know, submit code as GPL compatible and stuff like that. And then okay. they can go nuts and create modules. Right. Uh, if you want the module covered by the security team, so we have a, a security team that covers not only our core product, but also all of the add-on modules that have a stable release. It goes mm. through a series of checks just to make sure that you're following best practices, that there's okay. no XSS vulnerabilities or anything like that in your code. Um, and then it receives kind of like this little green checkbox next to it that says, okay, this is covered by the security team. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. So it's it, sort of like two different tiers. All right. So that vetting process, is that mostly for security, just to make sure that it's not uh, violating some privacy? Yeah. Or are, there, like are, there, we, are there other criteria? Well, we care a lot about um, the security of our product. Well, our project um, was, up until recently, there's a new administration down there, but in the old administration was running whitehouse.gov. Um, mm. It was running like an online petition system. So uh, it, there's a lot of Drupal use in the healthcare system. So there's a lot of really sensitive enterprise level information that's right. kept in a Drupal site typically. Uh, so yeah, we want to make sure that that when people are uh, utilizing add-ons that they can, you know, be assured that they're not going to uh, be rife with security holes or be sending, you know, private information somewhere else, that kind of stuff. So. All right. Uh, and these are, um, uh, is that the same process for, um, I'm trying to think how to phrase this, uh, you, people are submitting for what you described were kind of add-ons mm -hmm. to Drupal, but there's also the core Drupal code itself, yes. and that gets maintained as well. Are this, is the same community maintaining that? Yeah, it, it, there's definitely a Venn diagram there, but there are people who are just kind of on the core software project. We had about 4,500 people working on just core, which has, okay. it's a, it sounds it's a big number, but it's a, there's a long tail there, right? It's like probably two or 300 people that are kind of in it you okay. know, all the time. Um, and then the rest of them kind of c contribute here and there as they need it. And then on the contrib side, uh, there's probably another 35,000 developers on that side working on different Contrib projects. are the people that are building plugins. And yeah, plugins, that sort themes, of thing. that kind of stuff. Yes, oh, okay. exactly. Um, how, how do, uh, there's, there's, there's also people that are using Drupal just as mm -hmm. customers. Yep. Or I, I call them customers even though it's free. Um, uh, let's let's start with the, the add-on people or the people that are contributing to the open source. How did they get started doing this? Yeah, it's interesting. So a lot of them um, will hear about Drupal either from, you know, it, it tends to either bubble up through the tech you know, aspect. It's like people were into technology. Yeah. I personally got started in Drupal because I'm one of those people that views source on every web page I visit. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh, Drupal, that's interesting, you know, and kind of looked into uh, it. Then you there. had to look at PHP source code, which yeah. I... I it's not PHP's fault, but for some reason it's I usually know. very ugly. I don't yeah. know why this is. It's like we I, like to party like it's 1999. Maybe that's like, why. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they're just all, no. they're all uh, retro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, <laughs> Sounds like you've seen this as well. <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely. Um, we're actually incorporating a lot more JavaScript these days because oh, okay. that's kind of a new fangled. JavaScript behind. on the client side or on the, on the server side? Uh, not on the server side okay, yet. We're still keeping that PHP back end okay. for now. But, uh, yeah, that's that's definitely an area we're exploring, like incorporating React and okay. you know playing around with different technologies and stuff like that. Um, 
but yeah, so that, you know, the, they'll get started either because their boss told them that this is what we're using and so they get in through that way yep. or they get started. Um, Drupal's kind of taken off in the last few years, so now like Forrester and Gartner will talk about us and so they'll hmm. come in through that direction. If they are like a big enterprise who reads analyst reports and stuff like that, they can come in that way. Or they hear about a high profile site that's using Drupal or that kind of thing. So they come in every which way. And then it's interesting because there's no like company behind Drupal. It's an open source project that has companies like Acquia. There's you know many other consulting companies, hosting mm -hmm. companies, that kind of thing that that contribute to it. Um, it's, and it's kind of a socialist thing. It is. Uh, yeah, it's, it's funny. It was made in Belgium. It. You know, it's very European. <laughs> okay. I don't know. But uh, but yeah, there's now there's people from all over the world, and they have all kinds of motivations because they you know think it's challenging and fun yeah. because they have an itch to scratch. They're like, I really wish it did this, and if it did this, it would make my job easier. So here we go. Mm -hmm. Or because uh, their customer ran into an issue and they figure it's going to be better to patch this upstream than it is yeah. to just do a quick little hack here. So sure. um, yeah, so all kinds of different reasons. Very cool. Uh, and what about the folks that are actually just end users? They just want to get a content management site up and running. How do they get started? Um, so they usually, if they're they're way on the end user, like they're marketers or that kind of thing, they'll usually get started because um, you know their IT department implemented this for them. It's kind of mm -hmm. a it's it's more targeted towards developer technical people. Than, okay, so than so you know my my aunt Mary who's flower shop, it wouldn't be she wouldn't create her website with. Probably Drupal not with Drupal directly. She may go to like a hosted platform that's using Drupal. Like we used to have a product called Drupal Gardens, which was one of those like uh, sort of similar to uh, Squarespace and that kind of thing where you sign up and you give an email and you click, 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 and you pick out your theme and all that. Oh, I see. That's abstraction <laughs> on top of the Correct. Drupal engine. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. Fair enough. And then, 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 of course, there are hosting companies that uh, I think um, – I haven't looked in Azure, but Azure, if you say new web app, there are options to create it as, I think, a Drupal site. Is that Yeah, I think so, yeah. I, okay. I, I know there's one for WordPress, and I think there's one for Joomla, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I'd have to look to see if there's one for <laughs> Yeah, Microsoft, Google. just to give a shout out, has been a big supporter of the Drupal community for a long time. Like, oh, yeah, you're can, welcome. Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> like we used to um, distribute, this is kind of a silly example, but we used to distribute our, our um, software via tar GZ tarballs. Yeah. Um, which are really challenging to work with on Windows unless you have external applications like WinZip or whatever. And yeah. so Microsoft actually sponsored a bunch of work. So now we distribute them as Zip or TarGZ, uh -huh. and Zip is just way easier for everybody. So, okay. um, so yeah, we have a lot of like good feels about the the uh, the, the Microsoft uh, project within our projects. So. All right, uh, people want to learn more about that. I know we just scratched the surface. Drupal's sure, a huge yeah. thing. It's been around what now, seventeen years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, people want to learn more. Where should they go? Uh, Drupal.org is a really good place to go. That's the kind of the main portal where you can come in and say I'm a developer or I'm a you know a digital agency or I'm a marketer and kind of get the starting point from there. Um, Drupal.com is another thing. If you want more of a showcase of like what people are doing with Drupal, that's got all the big names mm. like you know Tesla and Grammys and all those kinds wow, of sites. Big names. So, yeah, yeah. It's a it's a pretty fantastic project to be part of. What if people want to learn more about Angie Byron? Where would they go? Oh sure. Um, so I'm Webchick on Twitter. Um, I have webchick.net as well, but I haven't updated that site in a really long time. <laughs> it's still on Drupal 7, which is so bad because Drupal 8 has been out for like three oh, years. Oh, well, this now. is pressure now because I this, know, this, I know. this show goes out to literally tens of people. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so tens of people. I'm going to try and get this site updated by the time you watch this. Yeah, that would be great. But uh, but yeah, so I just blog there about things going on in the Drupal community, um, just some personal stuff. I'm a mom, so like I have a little daughter who I love so much. Five years so, old? Yeah, five years old. She just turned five, so she's oh, like all on top of the world now, you know, so yeah. Angie, thanks so much for being with us. Yeah, thank you. Really appreciate it. <laughs> Open source technology. It's fun by yourself and it's fun with friends. <laughs>